Hello, welcome to the next presentation for the 101 Essentials Cloud Track. This presentation is by Sangram Rath, a multi-cloud professional bringing 15 years of experience to his presentation on container security. After the presentation, there will be some time for Q&A, so feel free to type any questions you may have into the question box that's part of Entrato. Without further ado, here is Sangram. Sangram, we can't hear you, but perhaps we can use the phone bridge instead. Am I audible now? OK. All right, so hello everyone, and uh, sorry for the technical glitch. Um, good afternoon, good night, good morning, uh, depending on where you are. And uh, welcome to this track on uh, Security 101. Are you sure? Are you sure? Am I audible now? Okay, so <laughs> Um, again, apologies for that. Hello, everyone, and welcome again. Uh, good afternoon, good night, uh, and good morning, uh, depending on where you are. And welcome to this track on Container Security 101. The talk includes uh, some slides and a demo. And we will have some time uh, for uh, Q&A post that. My name is Sangram Rath. And uh, I'm an independent cloud architect and technology advisor, uh, currently working with a couple of companies. Uh, both are startups. And uh, lately, I've been focusing on uh, security, especially assessing security posture of uh, infrastructure, application and data. Um, implementing recommendations and remediation logic, etc. I also do a lot of trainings. So some of you, uh, especially if you have, if you're from India, you probably would have, um, you know, uh, seen me uh, somewhere. Uh, this session will provide an overview of cloud native security, but focus on container security, covering the challenges and risks that come with using containers. We will then see some common threats in scope and highlight some of the container vulnerabilities that are out there. Uh, the talk will finally introduce various tools, mostly open source, and uh, they can be used to provide a layer of protection for your containers. Um, some of these open source tools also have a paid version that provide additional uh, capabilities.
cloud native computing is the hottest trend in the cloud ecosystem uh, right now and uh, is uh, increasingly becoming the new norm for application development and deployment at the core of cloud native computing infrastructure are containers and with the increasing adoption of it um, because of the scale of deployment uh, especially you know the large scale deployments that um, uh, you know um, uh, we we see out there uh, security has become uh, an important aspect of the uh, you know um, uh, adoption strategy right so one of the best practices around security in general even before you can say um, you know uh, uh, cloud uh, became popular uh, is the layered approach to security otherwise called as defense in depth approach um, the four c's of cloud native security are basically based around that and um, these four layers of cloud native security are code container cluster and cloud uh, this session will be uh, particularly focused on container security uh, but um, uh, just understand that cloud native security uh, you know cannot be managed uh, by container security alone right so you need to ensure that uh, there are other layers like code cluster and cloud and you're following the recommended uh, security uh, you know practices around them as well for example secure coding practices uh, checking for code vulnerabilities during development um, maintaining um, uh, you know security for uh, cluster orchestration uh, like container like kubernetes docker swarm or any other platform that you use right and of course securing don't forget to secure your hosting platform the hosting platform could be on cloud very uh, you know um, common nowadays uh, but um, make sure your platform is uh, secure as well in this session we'll be focusing uh, on the container uh, part of it but make sure that the other areas are not ignored right so you've got the four c's of cloud native security there Okay, um, I still hear, I mean, I still see some chat messages on uh, uh, some people uh, not being able to hear me. Um, can, can someone confirm if I'm still audible? Just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's not a problem from my end. All right, uh, great. So let's move on, uh, you know, to quickly, um, you know, um, look into uh, what containers are before we look into container security, right? Uh, especially for those among us that are new to this term and what the container adoption market looks like today. Why is it that we are looking at um, uh, container security and why is it so important? Um, in this definition from Docker, a container is a standard unit of software that packages of code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another right the idea of containerization or um, you know um, earlier called as process isolation right is not new and goes back um, you can say a decade or more uh, however the way we use it today uh, you find it in every application, mobile applications, you find it in IoT devices, you find it everywhere, right? Um, it's definitely a game changer. And because of this um, huge adoption of containers in every aspect of technology today, we, um, you know, we, we are looking at security, right? So the problem statement that you are, we are trying to solve with containers is the reliable movement of code or software between compute storage network security environments uh, while at the same time keeping it light fast modular right so that's the problem statement we are trying to solve and we do this by packaging the code and its environment which includes um, dependencies libraries binaries configuration files uh, into a single unit minus the operating system that's the key here so containers involve virtualizing the OS and uh, they're popular, there's a growing community and the enterprise adoption of computers has also spiraled over the years. We'll see some uh, you know, numbers here quickly. 
to you know kind of um, uh, you know uh, really really prove you that you know that's true right so this report by 451 research which was in 2018 um, states that containers will be a 4.3 billion dollar market by 2022 right uh, container adoption is mostly driven by maturity over time uh, growing community which i mentioned a couple of times resources you know the amount of learning resources and implementation resources that are available uh, and uh, many enterprise products that are getting built around these containers as well and not to forget tech giants and high growth startups uh, you know advocating it which also builds a sense of sense of trust um, and confidence uh, for others in similar industries you know to um, adopt it right. um, got some more numbers here um, let's take a look right this is a similar 2019 report uh, by um, uh, portworks and it shows that container adoption you know uh, continues to grow um, in large enterprises especially in you know uh, uh, production environments so here um, almost 87 percent of the uh, people getting surveyed said that they are using containers and of the 87 percent you have uh, almost 90 percent people saying they are running container technologies in production right uh, and not to you know while we are at it not to you know forget a uh, a survey by CNCF as well that shows that containers, uh, you know, um, uh, container use in production has, has increased significantly and uh, you had almost 84% of the uh, people responding to the survey uh, mentioning that they are using containers in production. And this is uh, up roughly 15% from 2018 and, um, you know, um, th this is a result of organizations having trust in containers and uh, using them more for uh, you know uh, production workloads user facing applications customer facing applications and uh, you know um, yeah i mean th there has been uh, absolutely a growth in you know um, container adoption of lately at least ever since you know you you had docker coming in and making you know container as uh, much more easier to use i i would say that uh, right um, now, the same lines, when we talk about uh, growing adoption of containers, right, particularly technologies such as Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift, um, this is great. And its benefits like faster deployment, uh, scalability, portability has fueled the growth of cloud native technologies. But this also means that security, management and monitoring, these three areas uh, continue to be an area of concern for many of these uh, large enterprises, especially people running containers in production. Again, looking at a few surveys, uh, you know, not really a lot, but just a couple of them, you will see that container adoption is not without its challenges. And this survey by, again, Portworks, uh, along with Aqua Security, uh, on over 500 IT professionals, uh, you know, uh, shows that security is uh, at 51 percent is the you know is, is a top challenge for them right similarly the cncf survey also includes uh, you know challenges that companies have around uh, container security and you will find that security um, uh, i mean challenges around container adoption i'm sorry but and you'll find that security is on the list and monitoring is also on the list on, on, on fifth. Right. So this adoption rate means security is going to be more important than ever. And while it may seem, uh, if you go by the container architecture, that they are inherently secure because, you know, they provide um, isolation, right? How and where you use them introduces a lot of security concerns and this could be at the os level this could be at the application level this could be at the data level right so as containers are deployed by more and more companies uh, they are becoming a hot target for hackers and uh, some may say that container security may not be that much of a concern at the moment because maybe they feel they're running it in a private environment or they uh, you know they feel that their current security is enough um, but uh, trust me, you know, there is an increase in the um, 
uh, number of threats and vulnerabilities that we have around containers today and um, uh, more and more bad exploiters will uh, continue to focus on targeting containers uh, you know create container focused exploits and uh, you know we we have to look at security very seriously so it's a growing priority in container adoption and if you do it well uh, it can help you react to security issues faster as well So with containers being used, um, you know, everywhere today, <clears throat> such as mobile applications, IoT, machine learning, data science, and even databases, right? It's important to know what kind of container threats are possible. And um, there's been an increase in the attack on container environments such as Docker and Kubernetes lately. Um, some of the uh, popular container threads are listed on the slide deck here, and uh, I'm going to talk quickly a bit uh, about uh, them. Container malwares are gaining popularity. An example of this threat is the Kinsing malware, which runs on Ubuntu. Um, and, um, you know, um, it's provisioned in a container environment, uh, typically through a misconfigured Docker API. And uh, the uh, malware container, once it is provisioned inside your environment, can actually work as a crypto miner and move laterally and spread the malware to other, you know, uh, misconfigured or other uh, vulnerable containers and hosts as well. Another thread that you will see out there if you search for container threats uh, is uh, crypto jacking. And this involves, um, you know, fraudulent cryptocurrency mining uh, using your compute resources. And it is a lucrative area because you are, you know, mining cryptocurrency and you're making uh, um, uh, currencies out of it, sending it to your wallets. So this is a type this is also a type of malware and uh, the main um, uh, work it does is uses your computing capacity uh, of course you know uh, figuring out infected i mean less secure machines and infecting them with um, a container that can mine cryptocurrencies around ethereum or monero for example and then send the you know uh, currencies to the wallet of the uh, attackers Another one that you will probably hear uh, quite a bit from security uh, professionals is uh, the dirty cow container exploit. Um, in this threat, uh, basically the exploit is on the kernel bug to overwrite uh, a, so, a, a program called uh, set UID you know, in the system. And this allows the user to temporarily elevate the privilege in order to perform a certain task. Right? So by replacing the set UID program, the attacker can gain root access privilege when the program is executed and basically may be able to do anything right and if you think that just by deleting the containers or removing the infected containers your threat is removed uh, that's not true either right uh, sometimes these uh, threats result in uh, container immutability being broken so um, an example that i can talk about is the passwd set uid program in linux system then you've got the escape vulnerability again you know something that um, um, is pretty uh, you you can say that it's one of the top threats uh, and this this involves uh, you know um, uh, run c which is a runtime that ties container engines to linux kernel and in this uh, threat an attacker with root level access uh, inside a malicious container will get root, will gain root level access on the host as well and they might, uh, you know, be able to perform. They might be able to do that by performing certain privileged uh, tasks as container, or execute certain privileged uh, escalation bugs, or do certain misconfiguration. There could be various approaches to gaining access to your host, root level access to your host. Right? Docker engine, uh, you know, is an example of a container engine that was affected by this and has been patched since. Right. So this is this is just an example. However, there could be certain container engines that still have this. Uh, and if you're using Docker, of course, provided that you have upgraded the Docker engine, uh, you, you, you're you safe. But uh, again, you know, um, in, in a container, the threat vector vectors can be compromised uh, image, compromised, uh, you know, container at runtime or a compromised process. And a lot of these threads kind of are around that. 
Similarly, if we take a quick look at the uh, types of container vulnerabilities, um, here's a list. Uh, and uh, we'll only talk about a few of them in the subsequent slides in the interest of time and the level of content. But, to, but just to quickly introduce them to you, considering this is a one-on-one uh, track, um, container images are building blocks of containers, right? They are layered, they are made up of other images, such as base images, and hence they are a common source for injecting vulnerabilities, right? If you're using a base image that is that has vulnerabilities, they tend to be a part of your image as well. Further, it's a common development approach to reuse images, right? Especially open source developments. And hence, you know, it becomes very important that you, you know, uh, uh, check for container image vulnerabilities. Many images may also provide root access within the container that too without a password. So this is a type of misconfiguration scenario. And this can expose containers to vulnerabilities both within the container and in some cases to the host as well. An example of this is the official Alpine Linux Docker image that had a blank root password for quite some time. This was found by Cisco Talos researchers in 2019. And um, see, this might not be a direct threat depending on what's running inside and how you've configured it, right? But it is definitely a vulnerability. Uh, it's definitely a way in which some other vulnerability might be introduced into the container, right? So it's a concern. And there are many such images out there that come with blank passwords, especially blank root passwords. Right. Um, some other vulnerabilities uh, include uh, less secure container engine, uh, less secure orchestrator APIs like Kubernetes APIs, allowing attackers to get into your systems to provision containers, misconfigure, take control of your cluster, right, or your container environment. Uh, another example that I can talk about here is uh, an incident uh, involving, uh, you know, um, Tesla, where uh, hackers gained access to unprotected Kubernetes console. And uh, in a classic example of lateral movement, they found out the S3, Amazon Web Services S3 access credentials to some telemetry data, which was, you know, uh, apparently sensitive data. Right. They also, at the same time, while they were at it, they apparently also performed crypto mining. And uh, according to the report, uh, they employed some really sophisticated evasive maneuvers, uh, you know, uh, to perform the attack. Similarly, privilege escalation involves exploiting vulnerabilities during container runtime. The Run C exploit that we spoke about earlier is an example of this. Uh, within a container environment, remember containers can talk to each other, right? Uh, over the overlay network. So a compromised container can actually move laterally and in fact spread the threat uh, or spread the vulnerability to uh, other containers as well, right? Uh, this is a situation that could lead uh, to, you know, um, uh, DDoS or SQL injection or cross-site scripting, especially in case of internet exposed containers. Right? Um, insecure or less secure configurations result in vulnerabilities uh, this could lead to stealing data or consume compute resources to do crypto mining, etc. So while the value provided by containers is immense, you realize that, uh, you know, there are a lot of threat vectors uh, that are um, uh, that, 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 that are there with containers as well. And um, we have to have a different approach to securing containers. We cannot use the standard approach that we have for typical infrastructure. Right, so reducing attack surface area is very, very important to reduce the possibility of exploits through vulnerabilities. And this starts at every layer of the four C's of cloud native security. So it starts from the code. Of course, we are focusing more on containers here, but remember that your 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 um, aim should be to you know reduce the attack surface area. Right, some examples of uh, common container vulnerabilities. Uh, here you have, uh, you know, some CV numbers just for your reference. Uh, and they again are around the different uh, threats and vulnerabilities that we spoke about. Uh, run C root access, remote execution, blank root password, local users gaining privileges by placing a Trojan horse, uh, executing arbitrary code, uh, code injection possibility, right? attack vulnerability resulting in a read write access to the host file system with root privileges 
these are some uh, you know common container vulnerabilities some are old some have a very high threat number in the cv database um, while you might be already following certain best practices and many of these container vulnerabilities might not uh, really apply to you uh, just make sure that you are aware of all of these and you are implementing them uh, and following their recommended security uh, best practices within the container security challenges if we want to just focus on container security challenges right uh, again taking a look at a look at a survey i want to uh, point out two things here one is a vulnerability management and the second is runtime protection and when we talk about vulnerability management we are talking about container image vulnerability right so these are the top security challenges this is again a survey by portworks and echo security and um, you know uh, we we have those um, we have the survey revealing that vulnerability management and runtime protection is in the top 3 security challenges that are um, uh, that, that come with using containers so focusing on those two aspects in the next set of slides let's start with container image security one of the most important components and uh, you know um, or you can say elements in container security is securing the container images and because container images are commonly available they are very popular in reuse re so they focus on reusability and uh, you know um, many popular open source linux distributions are used as a base for these container images they are a um, uh, they, they are an important vector that brings in uh, you know vulnerabilities into your uh, application vulnerabilities into your system they may result in you using vulnerable system libraries vulnerable base images and all of that so a few questions you should be asking yourself in this step in in securing container images are are your container images free from vulnerabilities so what, what do you do? You start by using latest images. You run container image vulnerability scans. And this should include base images. Prefer certified images published by the vendor itself. Right? Do not pull images without validating authenticity. Do not pull unsigned you know, uh, Docker images or container images in general. Fix vulnerabilities before using them in production. Let's say you have to use a base image and there are some vulnerabilities. It's your responsibility to fix them before you actually run your code in production. So this should be a part of your entire container lifecycle process. Do you trust these images, right? So this is where signing the images and verifying that the images, uh, you know, are signed by a trusted, uh, you know, a publisher is important. Use signed images, preferably pushed by the publisher and look at the history to see if it has been modified. So that brings me to my next question. Is your image repository or registry secure? Compromising registries is also a very popular, um, you know, threat. People gain access uh, to your registry and they might be able to change the images or modify the images and add vulnerabilities to it. So make sure that your um, uh, that you secure your registry with uh, username, password, use TLS, uh, use private registry wherever possible, right? Uh, these are some things that you can do to ensure that your image repository or registry is secure. Are you following the least privileged access model? Very important. A container is usually executed as a root user if you don't provide a user value while creating the Docker image. And this could lead to a security issue. So if you really want your container to run as a root user, make sure that you know that's actually required. You don't always need a container to run in a uh, you know uh, a root user mode right when that namespace is mapped to the root user in the running container the container could potentially uh, result provided there are some misconfigurations or some other vulnerabilities it could result in you know uh, providing root access to the docker host as well or to the container host as well right so don't use a root user unless you really have to so these are some questions we ask ourselves, especially you know while we are uh, talking about when you're thinking about container image security. 
again uh, a quick report by you know um, uh, a company called uh, snike i'm sorry about the typo there um, the company provides uh, you know uh, fixing and monitoring vulnerabilities detecting and all of that and uh, according to them uh, the top 10 most popular docker images contain at least 30 vulnerabilities similarly there are posts and i would like to quote a post here by kena security which is also a company that secure that focuses on data science uh, you know to measure and, and predict cyber risk and all of that and they state that 20 percent of the 1000 most popular docker containers have no root password of course these are slightly older you know uh, you know uh, uh, service but uh, I, I want to you know stress on the importance of these things right uh, and and that's why these numbers and and these numbers are alarming if you have 20 percent of the you know 1000 most popular docker images having no root password you can understand that there is always and if you have just used them as it is you 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 have a threat vector there right so it shows that security is not to be taken lightly and uh, you got to watch out for these kind of things. Um, again, make sure that uh, there might be certain use cases for running containers with root privileges, but don't do it unless you really have to. Let's talk about, uh, you know, container runtime security next, right? So we, we spoke about two things, container image security and container runtime security. They broadly cover almost every security threat or vulnerabilities that we you know, took some examples earlier. So fresh vulnerabilities always appear, right? You might have done everything. You might have used an image that is um, free of vulnerabilities. You might have done everything at the code level to ensure that your image is, um, you know, uh, as per the security recommendations, you followed all the best practices and all of that. But vulnerabilities are not static. You always have fresh vulnerabilities appearing and uh, hackers are always on the lookout to you know exploit and uh, while we may have taken every possible step to ensure our containers are created uh, securely and uh, you know there is always uh, you know a new vulnerability or threat that could come up and uh, this is where um, making sure that your container runtime security is also addressed is important so that you um, have a better chance of remediating any exploitation that might um, arise uh, you know during container runtime so some of the things that you should be looking at uh, at this um, uh, at this level you know and again this is not a very uh, you know fixed list uh, just some of the things that um, you know out of my experience uh, i feel should be highlighted here so this is a list that includes but it is not limited to right knowing your application behavior very very important Today's applications are modular. Today's applications are uh, decoupled, highly decoupled. You have, uh, you know, serverless and whatnot in today's applications. And uh, it's very important to understand, um, you know, what your application does. If your application is only supposed to make, let's say, a get call to another component, you, you need to monitor that. And any deviation from only the get call should be detected because that could mean that there might be some security issue during the runtime, right? So knowing your standard application behavior, right? Um, standardizing it and then detecting any deviations through monitoring is an important uh, step here, right? So monitoring plays a key role in uh, container runtime security. Secure your container API access, very important. Orchestrator APIs, container APIs, or today service mesh is very popular. So even service mesh APIs should be secured, right? Um, because of the complex nature of orchestrators and service mess, especially, they bring in additional complexity and introduce uh, new attack vectors that might not be there when you just talk about running uh, Docker containers. Right, so monitor and secure them. Um, follow best practices, secure container engine platforms as well. Uh, for example, disable capabilities like, uh, you know, set UID to prevent processes from changing their uh, GID resulting in escalation privilege, right? Use a separate user instead of a privileged user for Docker commands. Um, use C groups, use namespaces. Um, they also help in avoiding privileged attacks. They are actually a core part of, you know, container uh, runtime uh, uh, products like Docker. Secure your communication between client and server using TLS. 
don't forget network security it's very important um as i mentioned earlier uh, in the talk uh, containers can actually talk to each other by default over the overlay network so if you don't want certain containers to talk to each other use network namespace use network security policies right uh, they are available in many orchestrator platforms like kubernetes uh, you may also force network traffic through an ids ips system for added security right so do these things to ensure network within your container platform is secure as well you don't have containers just talking to each other for no apparent reason because today's uh, you know hackers and attackers actually look at lateral movement as one of the you know approaches so if they find one vulnerable container and if that container can talk to other containers in your network that's a very easy you know uh, that's an easy thing for them they can leverage the power uh, you know and and infect all the containers and use it for their uh, whatever purpose crypto mining crypto jacking uh, you know accessing some of your secret uh, uh, information that could be inside the containers databases whatever you know your uh, architecture is made up of there could be they, they might get access to something that you probably would not even have thought of or just use your compute resources for their computing needs on that point i would also like to mention that do not put uh, sensitive uh, information like usernames passwords tokens uh or any similar uh, things configuration information into your containers as well uh, use solutions that can help you retrieve these details programmatically on runtime and encrypt them uh, during transit as well so if solutions like vault uh, from hashicorp that can be leveraged to dynamically retrieve these uh, secure information certificates keys uh, ssh keys username password and all of that right there are similarly other solutions out there as well use a multi stage build and create runtime container images that have a smaller footprint so you will actually end up you know reducing your attack uh, surface area as well have only the required modules and dependencies if you can use container specific operating systems such as core os uh, you know uh, red hat atomic rancher os there are many out there that can help you uh, you know um, help you implement a container host solution that has a lower footprint Uh, lower the footprint, lower administration, better security, uh, lower uh, you know uh, attack surface area, less number of attack vectors to you know address and so on. Keep your host OS up to date, apply latest security patches, all of that. Unauthorized access should be prevented. Use solutions, and these solutions are inbuilt in Linux. Uh, you know, so you can use SE Linux uh, or some containers and orchestrator uh, solutions provide their own security policies or profiling. security profiling as we call it use them right uh, they don't cost they are part of the mo of most of these products actually today app armor is another example of a solution that can be used to prevent unauthorized access to uh, containers so container runtime security could involve a lot of things it all depends on what your container does but these are some top things that come to my mind when we talk about container runtime security right so with that we are kind of uh, you know nearing towards the uh end of end of the slides we quickly take a look at some uh, tools that are available to help you protect your containers uh most of these are open source tools or at least they have an open source or a free version that you can leverage uh of course for added capabilities uh, you might want to you might have to buy subscriptions or something like that but i would like to make a point here security is not cheap and uh, shouldn't be looked at it that way as well uh so Uh, there might be sometimes uh, a cost to implementing these uh, security solutions, and the more complex your application architecture is, and if you require that kind of security at every layer, yes, this adds up to cost. But um, considering today's uh, threat scenario around technology, and considering everything is driven by technology today, uh, especially if you are using containers, uh, it makes sense uh, that you invest in them if it comes comes to it. Uh, so here are some you know um, uh, container image security tools and when you're looking at uh, container image security tools um, give a thought to um, or when you are when you are analyzing and selecting tools make sure you see uh, what is the scanning ability are they able to scan into the container images are they able to scan inside containers um, what's their update frequency how frequently they update their database with the latest vulnerabilities um, do they provide automation through devops uh, 
um, we won't really get into uh, a d- deep dive into DevOps or even talk about it much. But uh, you know, in the end, I will uh, like to just introduce that uh, security should be a part of your entire life cycle, right from development all the way till release. So use DevOps wherever you can. Helps you in uh, you know automating your uh, security uh, scanning and these kind of things. Um, it, it takes off the burden from you, right? And you can rely on the fact that you have a process in place that checks for these things uh, whenever there is a code that is uh, deployed into production. Uh, CE for tools that provide policy support. Policies help you create various security policies. Different containers might require different kinds of security policies. So it's a good idea if you can create various policies and apply them to respective containers depending on what they do and what kind of security is required for them. Um, Claire, for example, is built by CoreOS and performs uh, static analysis of container vulnerabilities. Uh, Anchor Engine provides um, CVE-based uh, vulnerability reporting. It's DevOps compatible and supports policy-based security. And there is a you know open source version, which is the Anchor Engine, of course, that you can use. OpenSCAP is, again, a benchmark uh, guide and conf- configuration baseline providing solution. Uh, helps you in you know ensuring that you follow certain guides and uh, implement uh, security as per certain uh, standard baselines. Similarly, around container runtime security, um, things that you should be looking at. One very important is real time monitoring. Right. Although there are inbuilt protection mechanisms like control groups and namespace case capabilities in container engines like Docker like we discussed earlier. Uh, If you are looking at a tool for container runtime security, look at real-time monitoring capability, access control capability, look at networking uh, monitoring capabilities. Uh, Do they provide forensics, which might be important for you to do root cause analysis in some cases? Uh, Do they provide compliance and audit? A lot of the companies that I work with, they need tools that provide compliance and auditing because they eventually Let's say you know build products that are around uh, PCI DSS or HIPAA or uh, you know maybe conforming to GDPR regulations, whatever that need may be. You know sometimes they want these tools to provide some sort of a compliance and audit report as well. So Sysdic is an example that provides uh, deep system level capturing and real time analysis capabilities. And Falco is also an open source cloud native runtime security project by uh, Sysdic, uh, which uh, kind of is the de facto uh, threat uh, engine uh, you will find on Kubernetes, right? So these are some tools that you can look at. There are many out there. I have just picked out some of them that are very popular out there. Again, depending on you know uh, my uh, uh, you know uh, work, uh, you might have worked with other tools. And of course, uh, whatever the tool is, just make sure that you look at some of these things and select a tool that works out best for uh, for your needs. Some other container security tools, uh, you've got Docker Bench for security, very good for auditing Docker containers against uh, security benchmarks, right? Then you've got the Docker Content Trust, which we use for image signing. You enable this and you will not be able to download unsigned images. Uh, you've got um, uh, Cilium Calico that are around network security. Uh, they both provide network security policies, by the way, which can help you isolate containers uh, and and enforce networking policies for a group of containers, normally, you know, a pod or something like that. Then you've got Notary, which is for image signing and separation of roles. Uh, you know, uh, that's also, you know, an interesting tool that can be uh, used. And, uh, many of these are, you know, in fact, all of these are have some sort of a free or open source version available. So you are good to start with some of these at least initially and doesn't cost you a dime to you know uh, look at the security posture of your uh, container engine both at runtime as well as container uh, image security right so with this um, i'm at the point where uh, i'll quickly you know show you a couple of these tools in action um, I've, I've got a you know um, uh, environment up uh, a couple of environments up uh, just to you know save time and 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 uh, ensure that we quickly able to see how these tools uh, say give you reports and give you vulnerability uh, reports and all of that so we'll take a look at docker bench for security for auditing docker containers 
we will also take a look at uh, a demo on how to use uh, anchor engine and uh, maybe you know uh, uh, if time permits look at a couple of more uh, demos and pretty close and then just 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 one more slide uh, to end the uh, and then i'll be uh, happy to take any questions you might have all right um getting some messages in the chat about some of you not being able to hear me um i uh, again it'll be great if someone else from the you know uh, from the group can quickly you know confirm if that's the case or maybe if you can hear me just quickly you know let me know uh, i hope i'm still audible to uh, the majority of the uh, audience here All right, I'm getting some all good. So it looks like you know uh, I, I I'll just I'll move on to the demo here. Uh, we'll be sharing my screen here in a second. So quickly connect. of the sessions here. So the first one that we will take a look at uh, is uh, how to run the Docker uh, bench so i have a machine here that i'm connected to this is a docker uh, swarm cluster okay i've got some uh, you know containers running here and uh, quickly run uh, you know um, a container that's available for uh, doing Docker Bench for security auditing. These commands are easily available to you. I just want to quickly show how uh, you know you can do some things without any cost and look at your security posture, right? Um, so we run a container that scans your host and the containers uh, for um, you know it, it it checks your Docker uh, you know. Um, uh, runtime engine as well and checks your uh, if you have docker swarm checks into that as well so checks your docker swarm configuration docker security configurations um you know container runtime like i said um image and build file uh, auditing um docker daemon configuration file auditing so it does a lot of things it's very similar to pci dss if you've done that you've got some uh, security controls and then within those security controls you've got some subsections uh, so it does all of that based on the Docker Bench for security, uh, you know, um, standard practices. You can say. Uh, so this is a quick um, run of the Docker Bench for security. This is version one three four, and it checks for a lot of common best practices around deploying Docker containers in production, and it is inspired by the CIS Docker Community Edition benchmark, which is version one one zero. So that's um, um, that's that's a, that's your Docker bench for security. Similarly, if you um, if you want to take a look at uh, the Anchor engine, right? Uh, we'll quickly run some commands there as well. I know I might have uh, I might be running out of time, so I hope I can. If you're still here and looking at this, I hope I can quickly show this for you. I've got some containers running here as well and i've got the anchor engine running there is a command to quickly bring this up there is a associated docker compose uh, file as well and then um, you know um, i've got a couple of docker images like node 10 for example i've downloaded the images beforehand just to save some time this is roughly around 911 mb so now if i have to if i if i had to you know uh, run the analysis using anchor CLI, 
uh, I run something like this. This is the URL of the Encore engine running on the uh, as, as a container here. So you first uh, add the image, wait for the analysis to complete by running the wait command. So your URL, username, password, image wait, and then the image name and the tag. Right. And then you can look at the vulnerabilities after the analysis is done. So the command here is IMAGVULN. This takes a few um, uh, seconds and you can see a, a lot of them. There is severity level as well. So if I start with, uh, you know, uh, more, you can see some high severity uh, vulnerabilities associated and, and their equivalent CV numbers as well, right? Uh, so you get all the details uh, when you do the uh, analysis through Encore engine. Should be coming in any time. Okay, you can see some high severity vulnerabilities as well. Another uh, example that I was talking about uh, to perform as part of Docker security or container security in general is uh, you know using Docker Content Trust, right? So for this, you do a export uh, Docker Content Trust equals to one basically saying that I want to download only trusted images. And then if you try to pull a untrusted image, it says that the remote trust data does not exist for that container image, right? So you can either disable content trust and download it if you really have to, or you can just, uh, you will only be able to download images that are um, you know trusted. Right, so these are some uh, examples of how you can uh, check for vulnerabilities or audit your uh, container environment for uh, known vulnerabilities and then of course fix the problem and rerun them again. Uh, follow certain recommended best practices uh, using Docker Bench for security um, as, as part of your container adoption in your enterprises. Right, so uh, with that, um, you know, a quick summary of uh, some of the uh, container best practices. Um, again, ensure that you use latest images, scan your image for vulnerabilities, use images from trusted repositories, least privileged access, uh, monitoring, very important. Right, your aim should always be to reduce your uh, um, attack surface area in every way possible. Uh, and use a uh, gated approach to security. The more layers you have when it comes to security, uh, you you have some time before you can actually, uh, before the attackers can actually get to your data, right? So uh, more number of gates or defense in depth approach or layered security approach uh, helps a lot, uh, especially when you are attacked, right? Uh, so please make sure uh, you try and implement some of these. A lot of these can be also experimented using sandbox environment. So please play around with it. And I want to end by, you know, um, introducing, uh, you know, two terms or two, two, def two words, you can say. Uh, one is container security must be embedded into your container lifecycle. I have been saying this a few times and should not be an afterthought. Hence, take a look at how you can leverage DevOps as part of your container security practices. It will make things easier for you in the long run. And second, shift left when it comes to security.
it's very important that you do security steps as often as possible and as early as possible in your life cycle the sooner you do the less you will have uh, the less threats or the less 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 problems you will have later on in your cycle right so um uh, thank you for your time and uh, if there are any questions i'll be happy to take them i'll quickly take a look at the chat window and see if there are any questions and then read out and uh, address uh, some of them So a uh, couple of questions that I want to point out, um, you know, uh, is um, are there tools to scan images? Uh, we we saw some tools. Right. Um, saw some examples of tools. Right. Another question uh, by Unni Krishnan uh, was, can you please share the slides? Uh, yes, they will be a part of the recorded session. Sarvanan had a question, isn't some of the threats addressed by SE Linux? Yes, hardening on the host level. Uh, remember, we had the four levels of security and one of the levels was, uh, you know, cloud security. And basically, your host security comes at that level. So any host that you're using to run uh, orchestration platforms or just standalone container engines, yes, we follow the hardening approach. Uh, and SE Linux is definitely something that um, uh, can help you address some of those issues. Right. Uh, I think, uh, let me see if there are any more questions. None that I can see in the chat window. Do any any of you have any more questions? Please uh, feel free to post them in the chat window. I oh I'm I, I saw this message now. Yes, I ran some commands to uh, run the Docker bench for security. Uh, some questions by Sven Troy uh, saying you were not able to see anything on the console, but uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, sorry about that. If you missed them out, I I I felt my screen was being shared so. Yeah, again, there might have been some, uh, you know, um, um, there might have been some uh, latency when it comes to uh, the refreshing. So you might have seen them later. So again, uh, just to address some of these concerns here, latency between my slides and the uh, demo. Maybe the demo is still running for some of you. Is it good to have production containers in virtual machines, right? Uh, Anders has had this question. Yes, in fact, using containers in virtual machines and not running them directly on host actually gives you an added layer of security. So yes, it is good to have production containers in virtual machines. Lon had a question. Uh, do you have a recommendation for which container platforms tend to be more secure, Kubernetes versus Docker versus anything else? Well, I've had I've had experience working with Kubernetes and a bit on CoreOS uh, and uh, some years back with the Mesos uh, as well platform as well. 
Um, when you talk about maturity and when you talk about the number of tools available and the compatibility and the amount of, uh, you know, uh, support and, you know, ease of integration, you'll find that Kubernetes uh, stands out. Uh, so in spite of having inbuilt security options, yes, you know, you have got other tools as well that can be easily integrated or they can be, a, they can be made a part of your um, uh, container data center whatever you want to call it right uh, having said this that's my experience uh, some people might have a different opinion around it but yes the i i would say uh, securing pods and all are relatively much simpler and easier and you have a lot of resources around that can you point us to a collection of links regarding best practices and tools uh, don't have it right now bookmarked but um, I've got one link for from Docker that I can quickly share. So I'm going to put it on the answer here. Right. And there's another in another one as well, which I bookmarked from Docker. I'm going to share that. What helps containers run? smoothly okay that's an interesting question and um, um, many things uh, you know help run containers smoothly but i think the first thing there are a couple of things that i would like to point out one your orchestration software very important that you choose an orchestration software when you have hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of containers you need a good orchestrator number two um, monitoring what monitoring solutions are available and sometimes these orchestration systems have some really good integration for example kubernetes with prometheus is a good example of a monitoring solution that would work out really good for you and you need monitoring to run things smoothly uh, even for that matter understanding the security posture and where you stand in terms of security at the moment so monitoring orchestration these are some things that i would say help containers run smoothly some people who run complex architectures also might add networking to it, but you know these are some things uh, that I would say uh, do that. Right. Um, uh, Raimar had a question. Uh, you know, it seems that I will end up micromanaging many of these containers, especially the list of CVs is as long as we have seen. Any advice on practical approach of fixing all these vulnerabilities? Uh, the one of the things that I do is I use um, uh, latest images, and I have given, I've deliberately used some older images to show you vulnerabilities. Uh, so use latest images and use minimal images. You know, start something very minimal and add your own layers. And of course, you know, when you make the final image, remove anything else that is not required during the process of, so use a multi-stage build process, but use, but use latest images and make sure that your application security and data security is well taken care of. So even if sometimes you have certain vulnerabilities that get introduced, see vulnerabilities will come in and, and you know, even if you have taken an image that has zero vulnerabilities, there is no guarantee that these will not appear again in the future. So there might be new vulnerabilities. But if you have designed your application and data to be secure enough and the communication between them and application secrets and data encryption in transit at rest and all of those, you will have a better uh, protection, especially when it comes to data breach and you know protecting your data and applications. Um, right, but uh, security is something that you, you cannot say that you fixed it. You know, there's always something new around security. Okay, moving on to some more questions. Um, yes, uh, Christian, I hope you saw some of those uh, uh, examples. So one way to enforce uh, that you are using only signed images is to enable uh, Docker content trust uh, in case, uh, you know, you're using Docker. Uh, I, I use, you know, Docker uh, images often. So or it's a private registry and you uh, use, um, for example, notary to sign your images, right? So, 
So use Docker uh, Content Trust or use uh, Notary to sign your images. And that will be your way to enforce. Okay. Uh, what's the performance hit for having containers within VMs? Good question. And unfortunately, don't have numbers in my head right now. Uh, it would depend on the virtualization. If you have, uh, like, uh, if you have virtualization using, uh, you know, um, platforms that are purpose built for containers running within VMs, right? Uh, maybe lightweight ones, uh, or uh, you know, um, it, it it depends. If you are taking a core OS that does not have a lot of uh, a lot of additional bells and whistles, and uh, you know. Um, you have a good amount of and the provider is good and your virtualization capabilities your hypervisor all these things come into play i guess whenever i have had this question i've always uh, my answer has always been give me some you know um, hypervisor that you choose and i'm going to do some tests and tell you what it is because compute changes uh, platforms change things upgrade things change it's all agile and you never know the might have been a performance bottleneck, you know, earlier. For example, I've seen, uh, again, this is from my personal experience, running containers in VMs in Google is not performance, uh, it does not have a lot of performance impact. But then you trade off performance versus security. So certain containers that require that kind of added gate, you might use them in containers, in, in VMs. Some containers that do not need that added uh, uh you know uh, security maybe just that minus the vm security is okay for them you know you can probably benefit from uh, performance like uis and presentation layers and things like that but i've seen that google platform is relatively better when it comes to running containers and vms compared to other platforms i haven't done a comparison between google aws and azure although i worked on all three of them but that's a good point that you brought in maybe i'm going to try that sometime when i Right, so moving on to the next question. Uh, looks like I still have some time. Recommendation for running Docker daemon as a non-root user. Yes, please, uh, you know, Michelle had this question. Um, uh, try and run Docker daemon as a uh, non-root user. And I think uh, Google, uh, Docker has a new feature, you know, uh, it's called a rootless mode. And uh, that's still in preview though, if I'm not wrong. Uh, please take a look at that. Uh, I guess uh, that's something. It's still in preview though. And um, rootless mode uh, executes the Docker daemon and containers inside a user namespace. Very similar to, you know, uh, user NS remap mode. Yes, why not? And Anders has a question. Can you use tools like Puppet to keep the container update? Of course, you know, use DevOps approaches and uh, you can have Puppet uh, scripts that are written uh, that regularly, you know, map or uh, benchmark against a database or something like that. And uh, also maybe, you know, recreate your container images with any added vulnerability fixes and all of that. Sure, yes. In fact, like I said, you know, I ended up mentioning that use DevOps as your approach. You, you cannot just remember everything and ensure that security has been checked. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. All right, I guess uh, I'm gonna move on back to the front. Uh, I, ho I have hopefully answered all the questions. Um, feel free to check me out uh, anywhere you feel like, and uh, I'll be happy to, you know, uh, answer any more questions you might have. Right. Um, all right. I guess we have no more questions. Um, so I thank you for your time, uh, especially if you are in one of those time zones where it's either early morning or maybe, you know, middle of the night, like it is for me. And, uh, you know, I'll hopefully 
talk to you sometime in some other session. Thank you, and all of you have a good day or good night, good evening, whatever. <laughs>